The Crusader C1 Spirit is now flyable in EPTU. This long-awaited sibling of the A1 Spirit bomber we looked at recently on the channel is the cargo variant of the Spirit family of ships, and indeed from the external view alone, it would be difficult to tell the two apart. There are however some very important distinctions, obviously the bomb bay is gone and in its place is a 64 SCU cargo bay capable of holding two full size 32 SCU cargo containers. The remote weapon turret is also not a weapon on this variant but a tool, as it has been replaced by one of the all new tractor beam turrets. We're going to see it in action in this video along with the introduction of ship tractor beams and the unique implementation on other ships updated during this PTU patch. The Spirit is one of the best looking designs in the game to date in my opinion, there is just no angle these ships do not look good from. But my first sight of the ship was all the way back at New Babbage as I called it to a hangar to eagerly await a good look around inside. Yeah there's a lot of like uh, other asteroids uh, casting shadows on asteroids. And I swear this ramp is wider, this is, it's gotta be wider yeah. Of course the focus was the cargo bay. Ooh space, there's a lot of space in here. have a spacious cargo bay. Yeah, it's got a lot of room there for, for storage. Definitely can't fit a... I don't think the new vehicle's gonna go in there. It's a little wider, but it's it's not like maybe an Ursa? And I'm sure the Novatech will fit in there. It's the only one I've got on here. Goes without saying. Internally, the rest of the ship is identical to the A1 Spirit, and that's great because the A1's interior was very nice. The C1 is a cargo transporter, and naturally that's where we wanted to focus our testing. But we wouldn't actually get the chance until we'd taken out the SRV for testing that you saw in a previous video. Critical had brought his C1 out to play, and his was painted green. You got a green paint? Yeah, I popped in, I was like, oh, I thought they were white. <laughs> I'd be heading aboard to rip the track beam. There wasn't much cargo or items of value to be brought aboard here at this salvage site, but it was a good opportunity to get to grips with the basics of tractor beaming. Jumping in the co pilot seat now. So, what's the range of motion on this turret like? Let's find out. The turret can be oriented straight down or near enough and turn to look into the cargo bay completely. The next test was to see how it grabs objects, and the first object we locked was not something we could move freely. We've grabbed something. I've grabbed you. Players cannot be moved around, but panels from the carrack out there in space could be moved just fine. Oh, Ooh, cool. it's a bit bigger than I thought, actually. <laughs> the guns from a turret would probably serve as a much better test object. Come on, yeah, I got it. Now, I don't know why, but my initial instinct when using these turrets was to try and rotate to the sides and around. This caused the turret to reset itself to the forward position. Oh, I guess we repositioned. <laughs> Is that the gun you've got up there? Here's what I'm thinking, right? Rather than trying to hold it the whole way in, is we take it so it's like this way. Yeah. Okay. Now, kind of like throw it backwards a bit. There we go. This one still needed a little manual work to get aboard completely. Or maybe it's just settled down now, but it's in the ship anyway. Oh. But following on from that, we were heading for a much more viable target for cargo scavenging, a derelict Halle floating in space as part of a salvage contract. There's a few other derelicts out here. Ah. I'd immediately jump on the tractor beam turret, and lifting the first item of cargo was very simple. It's a lot easier with boxes, yeah. It's a lot easier to get in. Yeah, I can put it on the grid as well, yeah. That's cool. The wreck is drifting. But the tractor beam could help with that too. Oh yeah, you got it. Nice. And we could not only move the ship, but rotate it as well. Nice. And now it's stationary. Okay, that's cool. I'd get to moving boxes again, still trying to rotate them off the side when moving them around the turret. Okay, that's two boxes on board. It's slightly awkward, but like not. The next box to come in was a much bigger 8 SCU cube. Did 
this point, we were not aware of the actual cargo capacity of 64 SCU and thought it was only 48. We got on top of the grid only two, two units high, maybe. And I move over to give Critical a chance to play with the tractor beam as well. Hmm? Why don't you give it a go? Here you go. This might end in an explosion. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what testing is all about? Nice, very smooth. Good. Free up some space in the bay. Oh, this box is a little too high, out of range. But when you have a tractor beam, is anything really out of range? Like pulling the ship towards you, maybe. Oh, right. Duh. So it's convenient that you pull the ship in. Oh, this is a big one. We still hadn't honed in on the optimal technique for when the cargo meets the turret, as Critical used the same sideways technique as me. Come down a bit more, I think. Let's get in there. Perfect. The tractor beam makes very fast work recovering cargo, and as critical and we swap places once again, I'd start realising the best way to operate the turret. The turret will face pretty much straight down. You can rotate around itself, yeah. Rotate it, yeah. That's exactly what I just saw. That's perfect. Pull it all the way to zero. Straight down. Rotate about the axis of the turret. That's it. According to the RSI, it's 48 SC. 48, okay. This, as we've already established, is incorrect. For all of its faults, the Corsair does carry more cargo. It doesn't. Does the Corsair have a tractor beam too, or? I don't know, that's a good question. For now, we were having an easy time moving even the 8 SCU boxes on board. So I imagine this is also how you meant to do the big 32. I see you. That was completely 100% fine. Nice. And there was even a 16 SCU box out there that, while not as long as a 32 SCU box, basically has the same kind of constraints on loading and unloading. There, rotating round. Yeah, look at that. See how smoothly that oh. If you lower it all the way down and rotate the turret, it will go in very smoothly. As we prepare to move on, I take a closer look at the C1 interior. Same component room, you've got the same living area. Did the A1 have a gun rack? It did, yeah. Uh, it did, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Hey. There is a station off to our um, starboard. So we were heading back to the station with a cargo hold full of salvaged goods. The C1 Spirit seems like a very versatile ship that I think would make a great daily driver for a lot of people. It loses out a little on defensive and offensive power owing to the lack of a remote turret, but I believe it shares Crusader's trademark speed and acceleration, so getting out of trouble might not be too much of an issue. Nice. But the C1 is not the only ship to get a tractor beam fitted on board, and another I wanted to investigate was the Drake Vulture. And at first it was unclear where the tractor beam had even been added to the ship. So that's salvage mode. What did you grab, Katie? I'm in a Vulture right now, looking oh, to see if it's got a tractor beam. Tractor beams are still a new feature, so the specifics of their implementation were a mystery. The examples that we'd seen though were all remote turrets, so I searched the ship for any new panels or controls. When I returned to the cockpit, I realised it had been staring at me the whole time. Oh, it is a tractor beam module. Okay, so here, here's what we got. Okay, here's what I'm looking at right now. Cinch module, scraper module. And then the other mode, the second mode, is a tractor beam mode, but it only fires one of the beams. 
probably good for manipulating your uh, the, the salvage target, you know. I still wasn't clear on how exactly the tractor beam was implemented here, but we were about to find out. Oh, okay. Wait, that's so weird. For me, it fires both the abrade module and the tractor beam module, which is weird. And we were about to see just how versatile this could be. Oh my god, I can manipulate the plate with the tractor beam while it's being salvaged. Ooh. Like, I can rotate it and everything. Well, that's cool. Can I bring it closer? Yes, I can. That, that is much easier to manipulate the salvage target using the tractor beam to do it. Yeah, are you able to use both mining things if you're not using the tractor or it's not even hooked up? No, I can use I can use both of the cinch, like they are in a group together. If I'm using the abrade, it's the abrade and a tractor beam. Um Are there still two abrade modules on there? No, one. Oh, okay. Presumably you can swap a you can mix and match. So I would imagine that running to a braid is still an option, as would probably probably be running two tractor beams if you, you know, wanted to just track the things around. <laughs> running four tractor beams if you're really weird. <laughs> Using a tractor beam as one of the salvage heads obviously makes your salvage speed half as effective, but the ease of rotating an object maybe makes up for it. The Vulture is also seen in upgrade to its headlights, in that it has some now. A very welcome change that no doubt will make a lot of salvagers very happy, as previously the lights were very, very poor. And of course, when it's time to unload, just have your C1 crew pull the boxes directly from your cargo bay. But the ship I was most excited about seeing upgraded was an old favourite of mine. This pirate caterpillar is loaded up with vehicles, and caterpillars can now be very easily loaded with vehicles thanks to two additions, one of which is vehicle tractor beams. I was setting down on Microtech to rearrange some of the cargo on board. The observation room now houses a working tractor beam station, and this can be used to unload some of the vehicles that I brought down here with me. But loading vehicles back in is also possible with this tractor beam. Now, owing to the less than optimal position of the tractor beam under the wing of the ship, you cannot see into the bays very well, and might need to tidy up the position of a loaded vehicle after it has been brought on board. Well now we also have a brand new handheld tractor beam that the animation still needs some work for, and this much larger version of the old tractor beam can lift most vehicles. The yellow outline of the Ursa, I think, is a weight warning, but it can be moved, so it must be right on the limit. As you can see, the position of the starboard tractor beam could have gone further out from the hull, maybe giving it a better view of the base. But on the lower floor of the command module, there is another tractor beam station. This beam is also placed close to the hull, but someday this command module will be detachable, and then you have a tractor beam that you can place at any angle that is necessary. Yeah. 
it is a very exciting time in Star Citizen right now with a noticeable upswing in content delivery since Citizen Con this year. Tractor beams added to ships gives a lot more capability to cruise out there on their daily tasks and more powerful handheld tractor beams also allows greater manipulation of vehicles and ships within the game. I cannot wait to see how these changes factor into our adventures in future. As always I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Without these very generous people none of the videos on the channel would be possible and I just want to thank each and every one of you for continuing to support the channel. Thank you. And in this video I would especially like to thank Nevin who recently became a supporter of the channel on Patreon. Thank you very much Nevin for your support. Ad revenue from YouTube is surprisingly low so it really is patron support that keeps this channel going and it's patrons like you that make that happen. Thank you. We'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.